All right, I found giants, giant giants, 100 feet and more, much more. And I had them DNA tested, and sure enough, they're giants. 100% human DNA, mitochondrial DNA, absolutely no question. Now, and I have them, and I have them in my possession, and there's plenty of them more out here. Now, that led me to the fact that I needed to find out how all of these elements concentrated on the Earth. And I found out that they're concentrated on the Earth by creatures. And creatures concentrate elements. They don't just flock together by themselves for no unreason, no reason. Uh, they call it recrystallization. It's not true. If you look at Australia and you see what you see here, you see this? This is all iron. It's all iron, and there's huge structures of iron. Air's rock, and there's, there's a pillars thing there that are absolutely, undeniably, products of concentrated iron from life, from the blood of life. And this can be proven because those chemicals will be identical to the chemicals that are in life, in the blood. Now, what happened, as you can see, is all of this is red, and it ran down into here. This was an ocean or a lake or some gigantic body of water at one time, and it broke and flooded out here. In the meantime, what happened was all, there was all this deposition of, of uh, nautiluses and shells and all those kind of things, and they have the same look as mother of pearl. They have this little uh, laminations, and they create mother of pearl and all these effort, uh, you know, flashy looking things. Now, what happened was because this blood contains every metal and all of that stuff, there's extreme amounts of chemistry going on in blood. And there's a lot of metals, there's a lot of, uh, of um, crystal things. Now, this was deposited here after this thing drained. And this ran down in here and I mean, it might have been part of the draining process, I have no clue. But what happened was this became shells and the real fine, uh, flashy looking opals. And over here, this is an area called Yawa. And here they have the terrestrial animals and they call them Yawa nuts. All right, look at this carefully. These are the lobes of the heart, the um, lobes and the valves of the heart. And, um, and that is the architecture of the heart. Now I'm going to show you what uh, they find elsewhere. This is from a site called pennystockjournal.blogspot.com. This is a fossilized, opalized heart. And this is found in Yoa in Australia, which is right outside of what I think was a drained ocean. And I will show you what I think about that. And the reason it has all of this extreme, fabulous, spectacular looking um, uh, colors is because it has literally been fossilized by being fossilized in blood. And the blood that came down there is the red ferrous oxides that cover Australia. And these, that blood did not get there by itself. Those red oxides did not occur there from just coming together by themselves for no one. That is a product of life. Those are concentrated by life. Something died there, gigantic proportions bled itself all over and saturated these things. And they have spectacular vascularization. And these were living creatures. And I have the exact same things happen in mud fossils. But my mud fossils don't contain this type of architecture, this, this spectacular colors because the mud fossils are, are not soaked in blood. These had every mineral available to them to make every connection there is to make to every different type of material that's in your body and all the materials in your body are, are different there's 20 different keratins 20 different collagens uh all kinds of things going on in your body some separate from this separate from that they keep blood inside they keep blood out all kinds of things and that is the product of this and and, and it's because australia is slaughtered with blood Here's something else you might find interesting. These holes in there, those aren't caves carved by anybody. That's a living creature. And here's one I have right here, the same thing. Only this one's a little bit smaller, but it's identical, same structure, same material, same color, same holes, everything. And they, they come around here, and this is from a living creature. And that is the plagioclases in a tendon emplacement. That is a gigantic tendon emplacement. 
this I would like to look at, but I feel this is the muscle attached to the transitional part of the tendon, and this is the tendon as a ball. Okay, this is from a place called dev.biologists.org. These are tendon emplacements, and this is the growth process. It starts like this, and they start to mineralize, in, like the bone would be up in here, wherever it is anchoring into. Minerals start to form, more and more and more minerals, and then it becomes heavily mineralized, which is that thing that I showed you with the plagioclases. This is the tube that goes up, and that is the tendon emplacement, and where that sheaths around the muscle, all of a sudden it turns into muscle, and that's where it's broken off over at the pillar, over in Australia and the rest has flowed out blood and this is the mound underneath of it and that's why it has those spiky little inclusions there that I showed you on my smaller one. Okay, I, I, hopefully you understand the truth about giants now. They were gigantic giants and what it said in history apparently is true that they were they were in the earth and they literally are the earth as far as I can see. But anyway, go to mudfossils.com and there's all kinds of stuff. I have the DNA tests on here. shows all the information about the DNA on these. And the, the DNA test was done on three different specimens. One's the size of a human. One is uh, about 60 feet tall and one is over 200 feet tall. And they all came back positive, identical, same human DNA and it was very very carefully done and we would like to have peer review.